be back. I feel like the last time that I talked to a group where Philip and Eugene were in the front was my thesis defense. <laughs> and I'm almost as nervous today as I was that day. Uh, but it's, it's really great to be here. I've had, had wonderful conversations with people today. But uh, now for the next hour, I get to tell you about my stuff. So I'm very excited about that as well. So uh, efficiently learn to behave efficiently. So uh, my lab at Rutgers, we call RL Cube, which is the Rutgers Laboratory for Real Life Reinforcement Learning. And I chose that name mainly so you could have so we could have a cube in the name, uh, but also because well it's the Rutgers Laboratory and reinforcement learning is what I'm going to tell you about. And the real life part is is one of our big motivations when we're doing this stuff. So uh, just to give you a sense of what I mean by all this, um, here's an example of a real life reinforcement learning problem. Uh, this is uh, uh, Ibo Sony Ibo robot that is uh, interacting with its environment to try to achieve its goal. In this case, the goal is to see the pink ball. Um, it's not a commercially important goal. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, it is a challenging goal, and it's difficult in a, in a number, for a number of reasons. The, the, uh, what we give it to start out with is the ability to do two things, go left and right, and also to perceive its environment. So we can actually see, basically in terms of color histograms, we can see what the colors of the things are in the direction that it's pointing. And what it has to learn over time is, when I see these kinds of colors, is this the kind of situation where I should go left? Is this the kind of situation that I sh when I should go right? I get happy, I get a plus one when I see the ball, um, or when I see pink in this particular case. And um, you know, what, is it, what can I do to, to maximize my return, to, to get the most happiness per unit time? And so that, in a nutshell, has all the elements of the reinforcement learning problem. Uh, it's an agent interacting with its environment. It's got perceptions, actions, which are the decisions, the actions that it takes in the world. And there's some measure of reward, how good these things turned out to be. Uh, in, in this particular case, and in, and in general in reinforcement learning, we worry about delayed reward. So in particular, if the, let's say there's the ball, and I'm the dog, and I'm facing away from the ball, I have two choices. I can go left, and I can go right. Neither of them has a, a, a payoff immediately. Right? It's only after a series of actions, and only you know, to do it quickly, there's only a small number of series of actions that actually get the reward quickly. So it has to make these decisions in light of the fact that uh, feedback is not immediate. And so in this case, it's trying to turn, to minimize the ball, see the goal, uh, based on the camera, input from experience. Okay. So that's RL, RL in a nutshell. So now that you get it, let's see you do it. All right. So we're going to we'll play a little game. Uh, this, this tends to work pretty well, so I'm hoping it will work pretty well. Here comes the demo. <laughs> Any minute. All right, there we go. All right. So, uh, okay, so the, uh, the task is to end the game. You've got four actions, no, sorry, six actions. Uh, for your benefit, I will call the first four up, down, left, and right. And the last one's A and B. All right? Uh, how will you know when you win? You'll know when you win. Don't worry about that. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. What do, you, what do we do? Uh, up. Oh, wait, wait, okay, sorry. I heard up first. I'm doing up. Right. Eight. A. Three. Bound. 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 All right. So, so Spike has a high-level suggestion, but of course, I'm the environment. I don't respond to high-level suggestions. I just have. There's only six words I understand. So, all right. A. A. All right. Interesting. Down. <laughs> 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 down could be that fun. So, um, so yeah, what, what just happened here? What, what went on? So, um, what, what's this? 
That's uh, the robot or us. What's this? The ball. The ball. And what do we need to do? We need to go get it. And we need to deliver it where? Same color. Same color. Same color. With the thing that's this color, in this case, the, the red square over here, right? Which is a different goal than the last one. So, um, so you've just like beaten every reinforcement learning algorithm that's ever been created. Um, unless you include you guys as reinforcement learning algorithms. I'd be happy to do that, because we could say reinforcement learning solved the problem. Um, maybe it's not entirely fair. But the fact of the matter is, what you had to do to accomplish this task was a combination of acting to actually do the task, and acting because Eugene was telling you where to go. Um, no, acting to gain information, right? Because there were things that we didn't, we didn't know for sure what was going to happen. One of the things that I, that I know, that this is really interesting, no one has ever played this game and run into these things. <laughs> what do you think would happen? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, it's a wall, right? So you just you would push up against it and nothing would happen. But you never even tried that. <laughs> Our algorithms always try that. <laughs> <laughs> Over and <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, but, but just, to, just to set up the problem for you, so to, to solve this problem, you really had to balance, I would claim, exploration and exploitation. Exploration here is the idea of taking actions in the world to experiment, to learn, to figure out how things actually work in this environment. And exploitation, the other side of it, is using what you, what you know to actually gain reward, which in this case was to, you know, to end the demo. Um, in, in many problems, in real life, data is expensive. Each time you take a step, in this case, well, you had to maybe get questioned by me and nobody wanted that. So we wanted to have as little of that as possible. So the exploration, doing the exploration right and efficiently is actually really important. Uh, the field, just to bash, this is being recorded, right? So I shouldn't bash the field too much, but um, <laughs> the reason, just between us, uh, and whoever visits this on the web, um, the real life part here is because the, the tradition in the reinforcement learning community is to build little toy examples like that so-called taxi problem that you guys just played, and have you know, researchers build the problem, and then they build the algorithm, and the algorithm does really well on that problem. Um, the real life part is here now using uh, using data that's somehow external to say my lab, um, using data that comes in from cameras or computer network monitors or video games of various sorts, something where it has some reality beyond just testing out our algorithms. And whereas the majority of algorithms in the community kind of ignore this data is expensive piece because they write little simulators and they can run millions and millions of trials in a minute try other parameters and rerun again. As soon as you start trying to do this on a robot, you try to do this with a group of people, you discover that every step is really expensive. Exploration is, is, is critical, and you really want to minimize that while not giving up near optimality. So you can set that problem up as a computer science question and try to develop algorithms that actually provably achieve these goals. And um, that's what I'm going to try to set up for you. I'll tell you just to give a little hint in advance. We end up building on a framework that's known as PAC MDP. This is probably approximately correct for Markov decision processes. That's this kind of model, these multi-state models. And this just means we're going to try to do nearly optimal with, uh, uh, with high probability. There's a long series of papers that, that deal with this framework in various ways. Uh, a lot of it is happening in my group, uh, RLQ. And the, the main idea of it is that you want to choose optimal actions except in a polynomial number of steps. And it's a polynomial in what? Well, it depends on exactly the setup. But basically, how close do you want to be, be to optimal, how sure you want to be close to optimal, and things about the size of the environment. All right. So underlying this, as I said, in the PAC MVP framework is the Markov decision process model. This is an old model, dates back into the 50s, uh, for trying to say what it means to behave in a sequential environment. Um, so this predates reinforcement learning in various ways, or at least computational reinforcement learning. So it's model sequential environments, so we've got a set of states, a set of actions, there's a notion of a discount factor which says I'm going to get rewards as I move through the environment. Future rewards are not as exciting to me as nearby rewards, they get discounted geometrically from the current time step. Uh, at each step t, the agent, the decision maker, gets to know what state it's actually in. There's variants of this problem where you don't reveal that information, but for the, for the length of this talk anyway, we're going to assume this is true. Uh, and what the agent gets to do then is to choose some action from the set of possible actions, and that's going to cause a transition to, to a next state. Uh, when that happens, it receives a payoff, RT, the expected value of RT will represent with the reward function, which maps states and actions to real numbers. And uh, there's also a, one more function, which is the transition function. The probability that the next state is some next state S prime, given that we were in state S, S sub t 